Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas. I'm gonna be doing uh, the anesthesia for you here with uh, Dr. Peter Newen. We've been working together for about 20 years now. So I'd like to go over a couple things to expect um, that you'll expect when you get here on the day of your surgery. This is where you'll eventually be escorted here to the preoperative area where you'll get into a gown. You'll talk with Dr. Newen, go over some questions, some marking, meet with the nurses. Uh, get an IV start eventually, I'll come and that's when I'll be able to see you and you, you can go over any of the questions that you have after viewing this video. When that is done, then I will give you some anti-knowledge medicines through your IV um, because sometimes after anesthesia, patients who wake up here in the recovery room afterwards feel nauseous from the anesthetics that kept them asleep, maybe even throw up. So I'm going to give you some medicines, uh, three different types of medicines to help reduce that chance. Not 100% guarantee, no perfect medicines prevent you from having 100% of the time, but they usually work. So I'll start you with these and then we'll walk you back to the operating room. This is our operating room. We'll have you lie on the operating room table. I'll have you start breathing some oxygen through a mask. I'll hook you up to these same sort of monitors that you had on in the preoperative area. I'll be giving you some pain medicine, get you a little, little drowsy but you won't fall asleep yet until I give you one last medicine and that will be the stuff that'll make you go off to sleep and I'll let you know when that's gonna happen. Now, after you fall off to sleep, <clears throat> what I do next is I place a breathing device that's gonna sit in the back of your mouth. It is not a breathing tube that goes all the way down your throat, okay? It's just a breathing device that sits in the back of your mouth behind your tongue and then through this breathing device, I then connect you up to anesthesia gas. At this point in time, you'll be breathing the anesthesia gas on your own, like you breathe at nighttime, through the anesthesia breathing device. And the anesthesia gas now is what keeps you asleep for the rest of the case. So it's IV medicine that puts you to sleep, anesthesia gas that keeps you asleep. And you cannot wake up during the middle of the surgery no matter what you see in the movie theaters or news or TV, you're asleep the whole time until we are done. And then when it's time to wake you up after surgery, what I do is I turn the anesthesia gas off, now as you're breathing, there's no more gas coming in to keep you asleep. But now you're breathing it out with every breath that you take. And that's how you wake up from anesthesia. So you breathe this gas back out of your body. And when you breathe enough the gas out and you're starting to wake up, I take the breathing device out. We put you back onto the gurney and wheel you over to the preoperative area, which is also your recovery room as well too. Now, a couple things to expect in the recovery room after surgery, which are normal. First thing patients usually notice when they get back to the recovery room is that they're still sleepy, okay? And the reason you're still sleeping when you first get back to the recovery room is that some of this anesthesia gas that was keeping you asleep during surgery is still in your body when you get back to the recovery room, making you sleepy, okay? And the only way to get this anesthesia gas out of your body and for you to wake up is for you to breathe it out yourself. Okay, there's nothing anyone can do uh, to get that anesthesia gas out of your body. So your number one job, very important, when you get back to the recovery room is for you to take big, slow, deep breaths, okay? Because the bigger the breaths out that you can do, more the anesthesia gas you are getting out of your body, sooner you will wake up, sooner you'll be able to go home. So we will be reminding you that this is gonna be your number one job to do. Second thing, the operating rooms here, we keep them very cold. It helps reduce the chance of infections, uh, which we don't want. Uh, so that's a good thing for you. But the bad thing is being in this freezing cold room, you may come back cold as well too. We'll put some warm blankets on you and usually about 10 or 15 minutes, you will get warm again. Third thing, this breathing device that I place after you go up to sleep, sometimes leaves patients with sore throat. Most of the time it does not, but it can. So if you do have a little sore throat, this is what that's from. It should go away by later this that, that afternoon if you get it at all. Lastly, pain. Unfortunately, no such thing as painless or pain-free surgery. You will have pain over whatever parts of the body that we are working on. Now, what we want you to do as your second job, when you get back to the recovery room, if you're doing those big slow deep breaths and waking yourself up, I need you to report the pain, wherever it may be, back to us in one of two types of pain only. Okay, you only get two ways to describe your pain. We keep it really simple around here. Your first way is pain, tenderness, discomfort, pressure, whatever it may be that's low enough that you can tolerate it, okay? The only other way to describe your pain when you get back here, pain, discomfort so much that you cannot tolerate it, okay? So it's black or white, nothing in between. And as you notice, also I did not give you a choice of zero pain because you will probably not have that. When you wake up, you will feel something over the areas we did the surgery on. And all we wanna know is are you tolerating it or are you not? 
Um, now, nine times out of 10 our patients, when they get back to the recovery room, regardless of the surgery, they are usually tolerating. Okay, but everybody's different, but those are only two ways to describe your pain back to us. Are you tolerating it or not? And we treat each of those pain types differently. For instance, at any point in time, uh, time of the recovery, we report back we're tolerating your pain. No more pain medicines for you, okay? For two reasons. First is this, is the way pain medicines work, this is all pain medicines now. Pain pills for home, IV pain medicines that we use here, they all work to make pain less but they do not make pain go away to zero. There's no magic medicine pain pillar shot where you can take and all your pain totally goes away to zero. You could go back and do things without having any pain. Pain medicines at best just keep pain tolerable so you can tolerate the healing period. Okay, and then when your body is done healing days from now, then you have no pain. Okay, but in the meantime, pain medicines at best just keep the pain tolerable. So if that's how you wake up, you are tolerating what you're feeling, that tells us that the amount of pain medicine we've given you they're, it's doing a good job. You're tolerating your pain and giving you more pain medicine at that point will not make that pain more tolerable or go away to zero. Okay? But what it can do by giving you more at that point is the second reason maybe more important is that the more pain medicines we give you here or the more pain medicines that you take when you're at home, the more chances now you start seeing the side effects of all those pain medicines and the worst side effect of having too much pain medicine in your body, nausea and vomiting. And you will still have pain because that didn't go away. So now you've added a second problem, which for a lot of patients is worse than the first problem, the pain, is this nausea and vomiting. Okay, so for both those reasons, you get back to the recovery room, you are tolerating what you're feeling, okay? You leave it alone, no more pain medicines because give me more, at that point, doesn't make things better, it can only start making them worse, okay? So now that's that. Now you get back to the recovery room, you choose the other type. Listen, I cannot tolerate what I'm feeling. Yes, we give you pain medicines for this. Bring that pain down, make it less to where you are able to tolerate it. Then what you're tolerating, again, we stop, okay? In fear of overshooting, maybe causing you nausea and vomit. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Patients are typically here in the recovery room uh, for our surgeries from about, for about 30 minutes, maybe 45 for some longer cases. But again, it really depends on how well you've been doing your deep breathing and again, we will remind you. So anyways, I hope this was uh, enlightening. And again, if you have any questions, uh, about the anesthesia uh, while watching this video. I will be able to meet you on the day of the surgery and we'll discuss that. But other than that, have a good day and look forward to seeing you here at the surgery center.